In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, today we are invited to be here in this beautiful church of St. Sebastian here in Middletown. I think that's my mic. I'll just shut that off. As I said, here we're in uh, St. Sebastian Church here in Middletown, and I'd like to offer my thanks to Father James, who is the pastor here, for allowing me and really all of us to be here today uh, to celebrate this wedding. As you know, Patty and Rob are from uh, Simsbury, and that's where I am from as well, St. Mary's Church in Simsbury, uh, but delighted to be able to travel with them here to Middletown to celebrate the wedding day for them. So as we come together in this church, First of all, I'd just like to ask your, your help with a couple of things. If you haven't yet silenced your cell phones, good time to do that now so that we're not interrupted during the ceremony. And recognize that Patty and Rob have hired professional photographers and videographers, so you can you know, let your cell phone stay in your pockets and your purses for pictures during the ceremony. They will, I'm sure, share them with you from their professional pictures so that you can really be truly present to what's happening right here and now and not looking through a camera lens. So, it's a great way to be really present to what's going on. As we gathered last night for the rehearsal, I asked the wedding party a question that I'm going to ask all of you to think about right now. As we lift up our hearts to the Lord for Patty and Rob, what is it that we want God to bless them with? What gift? What quality of relationship? What do we want God to bless their marriage with? Take a moment, think about that in your mind, in your heart, and then we'll lift all of those prayers up to the Lord in the prayer of the church. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your great kindness, pour out your grace on these, your servants, Abby and Rob, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Scripture. Yeah. And I'd like to invite our first reader forward, Susan Sun Dunnigan, to read our first reading from the Old Testament. The reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good, not evil, all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and makes cloth with skillful hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for, of her labors, and let her works praise her at the city gates. This is the word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God. Yet if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. The word of the Lord. said to his disciples, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Well, there's no question in my mind that our good Lord has brought you, Rob and Patty, together in this beautiful relationship of love. Going back to the days of Assumption College, and it was wonderful to meet many of your classmates, uh, your friends that you have stayed in touch with over these years since your graduation, uh, but to know that that was a, a place where you found love, where you found one another. How beautiful that is. And as I listened to some of the conversation last night, I learned that uh, it wasn't love at first sight, necessarily. <laughs> but that you were best friends, best friends to start with. And then you grew in love for one another in a more romantic kind of way, we'll say, okay? I'm not saying you didn't love each other at first sight, but you grew in love for each other. And, and really, I think that's one of the best foundations for married life and married love, is to be able to recognize that your friends first that you trust each other, that you would give yourselves to each other in this beautiful way, and then, and then you have this gift of marriage that you share with one another. You have a foundation that you built upon, a good long time that you've known each other, and you come here today to now 
make that love in a promise. To say to one another, you are going to commit to one another for the rest of your days. And that is what we are all here to celebrate with you today. Every person that is here today is so excited for you and so supports you in this love that you have for each other. And we will be with you in this journey of your life together. We can certainly promise you that. As you are called to live this love now, in this very special committed way of marriage, the scriptures that you chose give you some highlights or some ideas on how to love one another. That first reading, of course, is a beautiful reading in the sense that it talks about how you found one another. When one finds a worthy wife, and I will say by extension, because it doesn't say in the scriptures, a worthy husband, when you find that person that fulfills and completes you, there is great joy in that. And in the readings from both the letter of St. John and the Gospel of John that you chose, it talks about loving as Jesus loved. We first know love because God has loved us, right? Love is not something that comes out of nowhere. God has first loved us, loved us into being, and shown us how to love by giving us his son, Jesus. His son, Jesus, who stretches out his arms in the great embrace of love on the cross. To embrace us, to give us life that is eternal. And then we're called to imitate that love, that love of Christ. And that love of Christ is a love that is selfless. selfless. It is truly giving totally. It has no strings attached to it. It forgives and excuses. All of those different qualities are how Jesus has first loved us. And now you, Rob, and Patty, are called to enact that love for each other. Give yourselves to each other 100% to make the sacrifices necessary for your love for one another. And God willing, a family. I know your parents are anxious for that. To make those sacrifices, bringing children into the world, and there are many sacrifices, certainly, along those lines. To be able to forgive. You know, just as Jesus forgave from the cross, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Sometimes you'll maybe have to do that for each other. Father, forgive him, for he knows not what he does. No, not blaming you, Rob. <laughs> but really having that kind of forgiveness that is willing to excuse. Because human relationships are what they are. They're imperfect. And there's going to be times that you might inadvertently, not wantingly, hurt one another by your actions or what you forgot to do. So be willing to forgive and excuse one another. But most importantly, be willing to put your heart into one another. Give your whole heart to each other. And your love will model the love of Christ for us all. And you know, that's really what marriage in the church is all about. To have a sacrament of marriage is to say that this couple is witnessing for all of us how God's love is. Your love for each other shows us concretely in this world, how God loves us all. And if you do that, your marriage will truly be a sacrament. Your marriage will be a guiding light for the rest of us. What a gift that is. Thank you for taking that on. So if your faith and your love for each other make you ready to now pledge that love for the rest of your days, then I would invite you in the presence of God and of the community that you've gathered here with you to pledge that love to each other until death do you part.
Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and of the community that you've gathered here with you, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you, and through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. I guess that's just not going to work. <laughs> I'll talk loud. <laughs> and so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Rob, Hattie, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Yes. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Yes. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Yes. Since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, you have your hands joined. I'd like you to join your right hands now as you declare your consent before God and his church. Yep. I, Robert, take you, Patricia, to be my wife. I, Robert, take you, Patricia, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Patricia, take you, Robert, to be I, my Patricia, husband. I, Patricia, take you, Robert, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. And in good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. <laughs> May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of your love and fidelity. Amen. 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 <laughs> I'm going to take the ring first. <laughs> okay, place on there. Patricia, receive this ring. Patricia, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the, Son, and of the, Holy, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. And now I'd invite the entire community to stand with us. <laughs> My friends, let us accompany this new family with our prayers, that the mutual love of this couple may grow daily, and that God, in God's kindness, will sustain all families throughout the world. For this bride and groom, Patricia and Robert, now joined together in marriage, and for their well-being as a family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their relatives and friends, and for all who have assisted them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people preparing to enter into marriage, and for all whom the Lord is calling to another state in life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families throughout the world, and for lasting peace among all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. 
for all members of our families who have passed from this world, and for all the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for the church, the holy people of God, and for unity among all Christians, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, who are present in our midst, as Rob and Patty seal their union, accept our prayer and fill us with your spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the glory of His name, for our good and good all the Holy Church. Receive in your kindness, Lord, we pray, these offerings we bring in gladness before you. And in your fatherly love, watch over those who have joined in this sacramental covenant, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in Him you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of divine nature and joint heirs with him of heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give a sign of Christ's loving gift of grace, so that the sacrament we celebrate might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, and without end we acclaim you.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, a fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Joined today in the sacrament of matrimony, 
May your abundant blessing, Lord, come down upon this bride, Patty, and upon Rob, her companion for life. And may the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may adorn their family with children and enrich your church and world. In happiness, may they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil and know that you are always near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the Holy Assembly and bear witness to you in the world. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surrounds them, may they come at last to your kingdom in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. We can offer to one another some sign of Christ's peace. Patty? Chris Brewer.
The Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home and in your hearts. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here today, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now it is my privilege to present to you the new Mr. and Mrs. Donahue. <laughs> 